uh, we're here in Grenada Marine today. Um, just thought uh, we'd take a look. There's a boat coming down the way on the travel lift. Probably going to be putting that right behind the boat we're looking at. Uh, over here, we've got the Trismic, which is a Lagoon 450, uh, 2011, owner's version. And we're going to take a look on board today, uh, do a walkthrough, and uh, see what we find. All right, here we are on board. Trismic uh, just finished a two-year cruise uh, with the owners. Um, finished up their cruising plan, and they're heading back to the working world. Uh, this boat's never been chartered. Never, uh, never been in a named storm. Take a look here at the solar array. We'll see that a little bit more here in just a bit. Take a walk forward. Well, a boat comes with a bunch of toys. There's stand-up paddle boards. Uh, at least there's one hard one here. I know there's at least one inflatable. There's also a uh, kayak that comes with the boat. Nice forward seating area up here. Uh, just call the, you know, it's just, this boat has great uh, space for, for just finding different places to hang out, relax. Do a little pano here. See the seating area up, up front here, kind of the lounge area. There we go. Look at the screen, Chris. Um, just in front of the helm. Take a walk around here. We'll come back and take a look in these storage areas up front here at the end. Just while we're up here, I guess, uh, talk about the anchors. Uh, the boat has a 45 kilogram Rockna for the main. You can see there on the front. And it's got 120 meters of 12 millimeter ch galvanized chain. Uh, and it's got some nylon on the end of that. Spare anchor is a Fortress FX55 with 10 meters of 10 mil chain and 50 meters of nylon. We'll come up back. Uh, there's our, the windlass is a 1700 watt uh, uh, quick windlass. And it's got a chain counter actually at the helm, so you can see what's going on there. Also control it from there if you'd like. I like this rope organizer they've got up here. Uh, you don't see that on all of them. It's kind of a neat feature. Take a look up here at the helm station. Electric winches everywhere. Uh, you can see uh, we've got the electric uh, primary here for the jib, uh, electric over here for the main, another two electrics over on the other side, one for the, uh, probably one for halyards and then another one for uh, the jib as well over there. Really uh, impressive solar array. Um, let's see, that solar array is over one kilowatt of solar. Um, also, if you notice when we were on the back of the boat, it has a Watt and C, that's 600 watts uh, water generator, and it's got the D400 wind generator right there. We're watching spin. Here comes our new neighbor getting closer. Had to move the truck. <laughs> One of the cool features on this boat uh, is that little, the little, this little pop top hatch. Um, it gives good ventilation for down in the cockpit seating area, but the real thing on that is if you're stood here at the helm, I can see right through there, I can see that back corner uh, on the port side. So if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to park it, uh, we, can, we can take care of that, no problem. Uh, it gives a lot better visibility. Looking forward, I got both my forward bows really easy. And then on this back side, uh, a little tricky to see, but if I scoot over, I can see it. I have seen some of these boats where they actually put a uh, backup generator. Let's just look for a quick second while they maneuver that catamaran around the Land Rover. Might not have been the best place to park. <laughs> okay, lots of antennas up there. That's got a pretty, pretty, exclu uh, pretty extensive setup. Looking at our instrumentation here at the helm. Uh, nice chart plotter there, Raymarine. Uh, it's got the control unit. We've also, there's our quick chain counter down at the bottom right. Uh, and then we've got our other Raymarine uh, gauges there. It's going to have wind, depth, speed, all that is right there. Okay. 
go down, uh, take a look down here below. Just a lot of room up here at the helm for, you know, the, cat, the, the whoever's the skipper doesn't have to be sat alone. There's room for, you know, seating for six or something up here. Lots of space. And there is a bimini. There's a soft bimini that will cover this helm station. Uh, it's just been taken down for hurricane season, and uh, we didn't uh, put it up for the video. So it's, uh, it is here. It's in storage. No problem. All right, let's go take a look back here. New neighbors are getting settled in here. As you can see, there's uh, not a lot of room between boats. Definitely, uh, Grenada's a popular place to be for hurricane season. Looking at this tender, uh, it's a, it's a uh, high field, 12 foot high field, I believe, with the center console. It's got the 30 horse Honda four stroke on there. Definitely gonna get up and go. The, uh, the kids uh, on this boat were actually water skiing behind that uh, occasionally, so <laughs> kind of fun. Wakeboarding, I think. Uh, here's our barbecue grill. It's actually a, uh, a griddle, if you can see in there. I don't know if we'll get the light right. There we go. Uh, those are pretty nice. I've had them on a few boats. They work out really well. It's a, a really versatile cooking system. The board over here, that's for hanging your outboard. If you're doing long passages, you don't want it on the back or Maybe you're going to put the, the dinghy up on the forward on the trampolines for a long passage. Looking around here, we've got really nice seating areas. Uh, just a great place. Boat, these boats just have so much hangout space. Just really nice setups for, for just spending time, relaxing, enjoying where you're at. Moving forward here. Uh, some of these boats actually have refrigerators in here. This one, it's actually just storage. We'll pull those open. We've got cleaning supplies and all that good stuff in there. On the other side, we've got the uh, garbage can. And then that, uh, that lid in the middle there is uh, it, it's a storage area. It's got a drain. So you could use it as a cooler. You could fill that with ice and use that as a beer cooler. Um, Whatever you, whatever you need to do. Nice passerelle there. One more look behind us. The neighbors moved back a little bit. That's nice. All right, take a look inside. The guys in the boat behind us are getting ready to chalk it up, so you might hear some of that. Uh, those little orange devices right there are uh, MOB sensors, so they're proximity alarms. Uh, if you have your crew wear those, night watch or, or whatever, uh, if they get too far away from the boat, the alarm will go off. The one downside to that is uh, when you get to the dock and the crew all wants to go to the bar, they forget to take that off, the alarm will go off. All right, let's take a look up forward. Really nice seating area in here. Uh, those little uh, stools, they double for storage, of course, and um, just give a lot of you know, flexible, flexibility in the sail, in the seating plan. Uh, you can slide those out here in the, in the cockpit if you want or leave them there around the table. Either way, looks good. Looking over here at our nav station, you can see we've got another big uh, chart plotter down here. Uh, it also has the uh, it has a PC hooked up here running uh, OpenCPN. So if you're familiar with that navigation system, uh, that's kind of a nice bonus. Uh, the boat has a, a satellite phone comes with that. Lots of kind of extras. This boat, you know, I don't really think of Lagoon 450s as being uh, an offshore boat, but this one really is set up to be sufficient and to be, you know, kind of running offshore to do ocean crossings and, and uh, that it has a lot of features that are really set up with that in mind. Has the galley, the nice U-shaped galley, which is really uh, convenient when you're out at, uh, out at sea. Um, kind of a nice way you can brace yourself there if you need to while you're cooking. Um, good looking setup. And so if we look here, We've got a refrigerator right here in the, in the galley. That's the stock Lagoon refrigerator there, which is great. And then look over, uh, over here by the entrance. We have another refrigerator over here. This one, the uh, Lagoon refrigerator has been removed and they've put in uh, a standard uh, type refrigerator. 
uh, the owners say it works great, and they were really having problems with the Lagoon one, so they thought this was a really uh, a big improvement over the, the Lagoon style. And on this cupboard over here, we have all of our electrical controls. So looking over here, we can control, we got our main breakers for the AC and, uh, and for DC there. Uh, it's showing what's going on with uh, with well alternator chargers if, chargers if we uh, battery charger if we had the engine running uh, also you see the wind solar and water generator that's on a separate controller um, and there's a propane detector there as well and with that you can see on that Victron the uh, charge level right now is uh, showing at 14.2 volts so obviously that solar is is doing the trick doing a good job. Showing the same thing. Oh, 14.1 on the on the uh, on the Lagoon one. Difference being usually is where they're picking up that charge, uh, where they're where they're measuring that charge level at. So possibly that the Victron is picking it up closer to the battery bank uh, than the uh, than the Lagoon one. That would account for that. All right, coming back over here just really briefly in the in the galley. Um, you can see it's got the nice triple sink setup, which is great. Uh, they've got the separate drinking water tap there that's got the filtration on it. Three burner propane stove and uh, kind, of, kind of standard oven on there, propane as well. All that is protected with uh, solenoid protection. Um, just noticing on that outlet over there, so the outlets are going to be ran off of an inverter. And we're running French style plugs. Uh, that means they're 220. Doesn't really pose a problem, uh, especially in the Caribbean or in the Med. Um, in the US, it's pretty easy to, to get around that. Um, just a little consideration there. So this boat, it has a ton of renewable energy. We've got a ton of solar and wind and even water generation, but uh, does not have a generator. So it's not set up for the AC basically is what's not going to work uh, if you're if you're away from the dock. Other than that, the, the AC will work on the docks usually when you need it the most. Um, it's not going to work the other time. You can see down there just below the the uh, the nav station there, we've got engine controls uh, mirrored there from also up in the up in the cockpit, so you can control the boat or at least start your engines from here. Um, it's nice with all our electronic gadgetry down there. Let's go take a look down in the in the owner's side. All right, going down into the cabin here on uh, on starboard, owner's cabin. We'll go forward here. We got see we got TV right here at the desk space. Lots of storage areas in here, and then just moving forward, we've got the bathroom full size mirror. Very good. Uh, lots of counter space, sink. There's more, uh, more mirror space. Separate shower up forward, and electric flush, electric flush heads. You can see those controls right there. A ton of storage here. Looking, uh, what do we have right here? Looks like we've got controls for what's it going to be? Oh, that's where our open that cabinet up. There's our holding tanks. More storage in there. I believe that controller is possibly for the water maker. Have to take a check and see where that thing's at. Just look in the storage down here. We've got lots of tools, spare parts, that sort of stuff. And heading back to the back part of the cabin, we can see they got a big Engel freezer, one of these uh, electric coolers, and they were using this one as their freezer. So that's a deep freeze space. Got the semi island style bed. Nice spacious arrangement set up here. Lots of light, good ventilation. You can see we got a 
hatch just right above and there we go TV in bed right there all right let's go uh, take a look over on the other side and this is the port side we've got the two guest cabins on this side go take a look at the aft one here first Again, good, nice, spacious uh, bunk here. Queen size berths. Uh, full, like, standing hanging locker. And the head is here. The mirrors look pretty good on these boats. A lot of times they get corroded just being around the salt water and whatever. Uh, these mirrors all look nice. I don't know if they've been redone or if they just are that nice. But there we go, either way. Uh, separate shower again and also the uh, electric flush electric flush toilets nice you know for uh, for the two on the two cabin side that's pretty spacious room there in the head definitely looks good all right going forward there we are a big full mirror there above the bed can't really escape that one these forward bunks a little bit smaller. They're not quite the island style, uh, but they do have you know, pretty good space. They're basically queen size. They just got to come on and off on the front side. Again, good storage space here. And over here we've got uh, hanging lockers. Fans hanging out up there. Got the windows all closed right now just for UV protection, but really good light in here all right looking forward here into the head again the mirrors look good electric flush toilets and this separate shower all right good we're gonna go take a look back up top Check out some of our storage areas up on deck. All right, one of the features we almost missed uh, here, it's on the port side uh, forward cabin. We've got a washer and dryer set up here, which is nice, kind of sorts out the problem of what do we do with that laundry when we're out cruising. Uh, trust me, I've done it in a bucket and it's not fun. We're looking in the port engine compartment here. We got uh, 54 horsepower Yanmars. Uh, they've got about 3,000 hours on each of them, pretty close. Fairly clean looking engine room. Doesn't look too bad. Um, yeah, we've got the, uh, looks like part of our steering system over here. This boat actually has two, uh, two autopilot setups on it, separate. So uh, if one were to go out, the other one could kick right in. If you uh, read many sailing blogs or, you know, things like that, one of the big problems people have on big crossings and and uh, you know longer trips is the autopilot goes out and we can't fix it so people end up hand steering um, I hand steered seven days from Seattle to San Francisco one time did not enjoy it uh, <laughs> so I can uh, I can vouch the idea of that double that redundancy on there is a, a really good idea still got that travel lift going on behind us so that uh, keeps everything interesting you can see up front there we've got this uh, raw water strainer and there's a fuel, fuel water separator just down there. You can make it out just to the other side of the engine. All right. We're going to take a look over on the other side. See what we find over there. These boats, uh, because of that setup, there's a little shelf system right there above the engine access. And uh, people get really tempted to use that for a lot of storage. Uh, so we can see over on this side. This is pretty full of stuff. All kinds of spares, filters. That stuff's all great, especially if you're looking at buying this boat. But uh, you gotta kinda be careful how you organize that. Make sure it's easy to get in there and do your engine checks. This is the locker up in the forward where normally we would find a generator located on a Lagoon 450. This one doesn't have it. So there's a lot of storage space in here. That is a, a, a parasail right there. Uh, one of the easiest downwind sails to fly. Once they're up and set, they're just super stable. If you've ever used one, uh, you'll appreciate that. It's about a $10,000 sail for this boat. So 
Um, big, uh, big bonus for, for this uh, particular boat. Take a look here just in the next one. We've got some hoses, some more water jugs. Um, and then hiding down there, I see the, uh, the remote for the windlass. It's right there. Got a wind uh, anchor, uh, winch handle, scrub brush, that kind of stuff. All looks good. Over here in this little guy, we've got some more dock lines and it looks like a, uh, a seat cushion. Nice spot. Let's just take a quick look as long as we're here into the anchor locker, chain locker. And you can see uh, all that chain we talked about. There's the bottom of the windlass. See it's got a nice drop. That's going to allow you to put that chain in and out pretty easy. Uh, might need to knock it down occasionally. That's some pretty pretty stout chain and a lot of it. So that's a good setup. Taking a look in the uh, forward locker space. Let's see if the camera will adjust there. Looks like we've got a lot of fenders, uh, some dock lines, some uh, looks like some water jugs down there. Maybe a tackle box. Hard to say what all we got going on. A lot of good storage space up here. Fishing pole. We're just here looking in the uh, other uh, port uh, port side forward peak locker, and it looks like we've got all the shade screens for the for the cockpit enclosure those are great uh, especially here in the caribbean generally the boats are all pointing to the east because that's where our trade winds come from and uh come sunset or you know afternoon it gets pretty hot back in the cockpit getting blasted by the sun so being able to put those up would be a really would be a big advantage keep the back area looking feeling nice more comfortable finishing up here we can see the guys are uh setting the boat behind us down on chalks getting that all set up uh, this is a great boat. If you have any questions about Trismic, uh, the Lagoon 450 2011, let me know. Uh, leave, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it.